What if I told you that by the age of 28, I have already amassed over $100,000 sitting in a long-term retirement portfolio that if I never invested another penny ever again into this account would be worth over four and a half million dollars. In today's video, what I want to explain to you guys is exactly the steps that I've taken. And this is a law, it is a practice that you must take. And if you follow these exact steps, I will show you guys how you too can get yourself set up for future success, retire the way that you want to retire, and also pass down wealth for generations to come. Now, I know that finance may seem boring, and a lot of people might think that finance isn't the most fun thing to talk about. Heck, sometimes I don't either. But in today's video, I'm going to disclose the four exact buckets that I've followed ever since I was 18. And what I've done is every single time that I received money in a bank account, whether it be in cash, in hand, whether it be a paycheck, the exact buckets and exactly the percentage percentages that I've put money in to each of these buckets so that you can see exactly where you need to put your money. Now, as we start, I want you to first pretend that you just received $100. In my hand is a $100 bill. And what a lot of people do when they first make these mistakes is they make that $100 and they immediately just start spending in whatever gets their eye first. Maybe it's a bill, maybe it's a toy, maybe it's a trip, maybe it's food. There's a lot of different things that may happen. But the first thing I want you to understand is this is the most critical point of your financial journey. When the money hits the account, what do you do with it? And so I wanna start with bucket number one. Now, bucket number one is the fixed cost bucket. And the fixed cost bucket will take up 50% of that check. That is worthy of $50 in this case if we received that $100. And what we do in our fixed cost bucket is we take 50% of what we made and we utilize that for our fixed expenses. Now our fixed expenses include rent or mortgage. It includes the internet, the water, the telephone, all of these sort of fixed expenses that you all have. It might be Netflix, it might be video games. It's different things that you spend every single month. Now a great example of some fixed expenses is right here on my Capital One app that I utilize to pay my Capital One credit card bill for expected transactions. As you guys can see, these are fixed expenses that I have every single month that are expected coming up. These things include the internet, they include Adobe, they include security systems, they include Spectrum, which is my phone bill, they include the, the dog poop scooper that you can see with Got Poop AZ LLC, they include Costco. Guys, these are all fixed expenses. And the point is, 50% of my income goes towards fixed expenses. Anything less than that is fine as well, but you never wanna pay more than 50%. Now there's a critical transition stage between our fixed bucket number one and going into bucket number two. Because if you can't listen to bucket number one and you are living with more than 50%, unfortunately, you're never gonna be able to have success in this method. Now when we started this video, we talked about that $105,344.57 port portfolio that's grown since 2019 of $35,000 to today of over $100,000 and is projected to be worth well over four and a half million dollars by the time I retire. The only reason I was able to have that success, as I told you, I would share with you in the beginning of the video is bucket number two. Now, bucket number two is all about long-term investments. I'm not here today to tell you whether you should invest in a specific stock or a cryptocurrency or real estate, but the point is bucket number two is worth 15% of your income. Yes, that's right. 15% of your income every single month without question needs to be going into bucket number two. This is in the form of long-term broker accounts with stock trading. It's in the form of 401ks and IRAs, and it's also in the form of cryptocurrency or maybe a real estate portfolio that you're looking to build. Build. You must be putting away at least 15% of your income into long-term assets that are appreciating in value over time. These are not speculative assets like penny stocks that you've seen on the internet or an NFT or some sort of meme coin. These are things like long-term index funds, the S&P 500, maybe a real estate plan, maybe Bitcoin, maybe gold, maybe silver. Something that meets to the eye for me is index funds. It's low cost index funds that I can purchase that encompass all of the S&P 500, all of the NASDAQ, all of the Dow Jones. And this allows me to not have to deal with the fluctuations up and down too much, but it gives me plenty of upside, potentially 10 to 20% annual ROI that will grow over time 
with my 15% investment bucket. Now, if you've already made it this far, well done. And if you've never done this, it's time to start thinking about what sort of income you make and the lifestyle adjustments that you need to make. By this point, a lot of people start to realize, man, I'm living beyond my means. And I get it. In 2024, things are expensive. Inflation is rampant. Things cost more. It seems like every single time I go to a grocery store, it's probably costing me three or four hundred dollars just to leave. So I totally understand. But that leads me now to bucket number three. Now, bucket number three is called your savings goals. What we want to do with bucket number three is to start priority one, building an emergency fund. Now, your emergency fund is so that if you lost your job or something happened in your life where you needed to tap into something extra because you didn't make enough money to handle it, you could tap into it. Your emergency fund should be at least three to six months of living expenses. That means if it costs you $5,000 a month, have everything paid, which includes your rent, your utilities, your insurance, your car, all these sort of things, then that's $5,000 and you'd multiply that by six months, which would be $30,000. Ideally, this is in a money market fund or a high yield savings account bearing some interest so that you can accrue some interest over time because you're not gonna be touching this money at all. You're not gonna be using it for anything else. You're not gonna be investing it. It's not going to be going anywhere. But once you've reached that $30,000, you might ask yourself, what do I do now? And this is why it's called savings goals. The savings goals bucket is for your savings goals. So if you're planning a massive engagement coming up, maybe you want to save for a ring. If you're planning on going on a massive trip, a vacation, maybe to Hawaii, you want to save some money in order to get there. That is what this bucket is for. But that now leads me to the fun bucket is my favorite to talk about. It's called guilt-free spending. So when we originally talked about that $100 coming into you, you had $100 in income, 50% went to your fixed expenses. You, of course, invested 15%, and of course, you saved 10%, now you're left with 25%. And that's exactly what goes into your guilt-free spending bucket. So what's your guilt-free spending bucket? Well, it's that burning a hole in your pocket feeling. You wanna buy new things. You wanna have a new pair of shoes. You wanna go out to dinner and splurge a little bit on a more expensive steak. What I personally try to do is force myself to spend 25% of my income at my current income level. This is what makes sense for me. And what you should now look at is what you're currently making and how much that 25% gives you as a quote unquote allowance each month to spend. All of us work so hard to enjoy life, to have nice things. And what is it to us if all we do every single day is to invest and save? We gotta be able to enjoy a little bit, spend a little bit. And so our fourth bucket allows us to push and pull into that. And the greatest thing about that is I don't have a rule on spending it. That means you don't have to spend it all right away. You could save it and save up for something bigger, maybe something massive. Maybe it's a brand new car or that brand new TV and it's got a higher price tag that's gonna take you a few months to accumulate and reach that. This is exactly what that bucket's going to do for you. It's going to get you there faster. And if you don't want to wait for that long-term savings bucket to go up because it's only 10% growth a month, now you have a 25% bucket that you have an opportunity in your guilt-free spending to save. So choose wisely where you want to put this money. Now, going back to the beginning of the video, I hope you can now see how I've been able to do this. It's very simple. You have to make sure that every single time you make money, you're putting away the exact percentage allocation so that it never changes. Because some of you guys, your income is very fixed and others, your income is going to fluctuate. Some months up, some months down. And what's important is that you guys go look at that and figure out what is going to be my percentages and how much do I need to put in each of these buckets in order to fulfill them correctly. Because what some of you guys will realize at the end of this video is that you don't make enough money. And that now leads me to my next topic of conversation. Bonus, if you will must learn to make more money. And so my call to action for you today is to start learning and figuring out what is my high income skill set. We live in a world called a gig economy and all of us want to do a side gig. We want to start our own side business or we want to do something and it can start simple. It could start from Uber Eats. It could start from Ubering people around, driving in their cars. It could start with a little side art business. It could start with a little side investment hustle. It doesn't necessarily matter what you're trying to do, but for a lot of us, we want to start start and grow our income. The last thing is, some of us want to accelerate this even faster. And that's exactly why I recently started a challenge publicly right here on my YouTube channel. In fact, you can see the video right here, which is our $5 investment challenge, where I'm gonna show you guys how to take as little as $5 a day and invest it every single day 
and show you exactly what that compound effect looks like month in, month out, year in, year out. And I assure you, if you go and click on this video, you're gonna learn a lot about how to do just that. And there's also a private group that you can join to see exactly what everybody else is doing. And so if you guys follow this exact plan, I can't promise you're going to have a $105,000 retirement portfolio by the age of 28, but over the next 10 years, you can certainly get there. One unique thing about me, guys, I've never shared this publicly, I've never been an extremely high income earner. I've never made millions and millions and millions of dollars in one given year. And so what it's forced me to do is be smart about the money that I have and smart about the money that I'm making. It's forced me to hold on to the dollar and figure out exactly where it needs to go to make the best return possible. But also, I've learned how to enjoy life at the same time. I hope this video provides you guys a ton of value. If it did, please click that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. We are this close, almost to 30,000 subscribers. And I'll see you on the next video.